But we're lucky enough today to receive a welcome from another person that, that um, can't stand up about. Um, Congressman Derek Kilmer currently serves as the United States Representative to Washington's 6th Congressional District. He grew up here in Port Angeles on the Olympic Peninsula. Earned a Bachelor of Arts from Princeton University, Woodward Wilson School of Public and International Affairs, and then went on to earn a doctorate from the University of Oxford in England. Derek put his education and practice first as a business consultant for McKinsey and Company, followed by a decade of working for the Economic Development Board at Tacoma and Pierce County. He served in the Washington State House from 2005 to 2007, the State Senate from 2007 until he was elected to the U.S. House of Representatives in 2012. Derek was recently re-elected to a second term in the U.S. House of Representatives in 2014, and we all know what's happening in another few days, so we don't need to talk about it for the next few days. <laughs> <laughs> he helped Puget Sound Recovery. He, he helped the found the Puget Sound Recovery Caucus to bring an increased focus and attention to the cleanup work that needs to be done to restore our region's waters. He's a member of the Bipartisan Working Group and the Problem Solvers Caucus, which worked to bring Democrats and Republicans together to forge greater consensus on a wide variety of issues. Derek and his wife Jennifer live in Gate Harbor with their daughters Sophie and Tess and their Australian Shepherd Truman. Please join me in welcoming. Gratitude to uh, Truman, the Australian Shepherd. Thank you. Uh, so, um, great to be with you. Thank you for having me. And um, I was given two uh, directions for my remarks today. I was told first to be brief, uh, and second to be inspiring. And um, I know these days when you think of brevity and inspiration, you think the United States Congress. Um, uh, in all seriousness, though, uh, there's so many people are shaking their head. No, I mean, wow, this is super intimidating. Yeah. Um, in all seriousness, though, I'm, I am inspired by the work that you do, and I want to thank the leadership here, and I want to thank Jenny for uh, all of her good work. Um, but, you know, the work you're doing to spearhead cleanup, the work you're doing on restorations pro projects, the work you're doing to protect our treasures is really vital. And I want to say thank you for that. Um, I'm really here uh, for two reasons, and their names are Sophie and Tess. They are my 10-year-old and my 7-year-old. And um, I guess I want to talk about this. I was asked to talk particularly about some of our efforts around Puget Sound, but I guess I want to talk less about this as a representative and more as a dad. As I think about the best experiences I've had in recent years with my kids, you know, the things that my mind goes to are things like going down to the beach at Copachuck State Park and let my daughters, you know, lift up rocks and see little critters uh, scare away. And it's going out on Hood Canal uh, on the first day of shrimping season and shrimping with my daughter and hearing her absolutely freak out when we brought up the trap and she saw a bunch of shrimp in there and she's like, oh my God, you know. Um, I think about uh, uh, being on the ferry from Bainbridge to Seattle and on an amazing summer day being out on the deck and actually seeing an orca uh, off the side of, of the ship. I think about um, going with my daughters to a Suquamish tribal festival uh, where they just had massive amounts of salmon and oysters and gooey ducks and we rolled out of there. And <laughs> what strikes me is that those treasures, the salmon and the shellfish and the orcas, they aren't a given. You know, they are not a given. They are not guaranteed. Um, rather, they're a promise uh, from us, from our generation to our kids and to future generations. And um, here's what we know. Uh, we know that Puget Sound has no equal in terms of beauty and in terms of ecological value. We know that Puget Sound is the largest estuary uh, in the United States. It's larger in water volume than even the Chesapeake Bay. Um, we know, however, that uh, the Puget Sound is still not on par when it comes to funding levels with either the Chesapeake or the Great Lakes for that matter. But we also know that folks are starting to wake up um, and, and appreciate 
uh, our need. You know, recently I had the honor of standing with Christy Goldfuss, who's the uh, head of the White House Council on Environmental Quality, as well as the governor and um, uh, my colleague Danny Heck, who I joined with to uh, form the Puget Sound Recovery Caucus and leaders of the Puget Sound Partnership and the Northwest Indian Fisheries Commission um, and a bunch of nonprofit and industry leaders. And we got together up in uh, Seattle to uh, announce and to celebrate a new memorandum of understanding to solidify uh, basically a roadmap for how the federal agencies will help our efforts around Puget Sound restoration and to basically subscribe to a shared set of goals. And what it means is, you know, and I, I, I will say um, it's hard, like I, I have not been in government long enough to like totally geek out over a memorandum of understanding. <laughs> I don't mind what. Um, but um, it's actually a big deal. Um, even though it's hard to get psyched about an MOU, what it means is that you have the federal government and states and tribes and local entities all subscribing to the same playbook and all agreeing to better coordinate those efforts while protecting tribal treaty rights. And um, it basically means everybody agreeing to be on the same team and playing out of the same playbook. And that's a good thing, and that's a big thing. Um, and I guess today, um, you know, there's a bunch of stuff I could talk about. I'm going to just try to talk about a few more brief issues. But today I'm really here to say I'm on the team too. And I'm eager to be partners with those of you in the room who are doing such awesome work uh, throughout our communities because frankly that's where progress gets made is not actually in marble buildings 3,000 miles from here but rather on the water here in our region. Um, you know I am pleased that the Washington delegation and the House succeeded in getting more than 450 million dollars authorized for the Puget Sound Nearshore Restoration Project as part of the Water Resources Development Act. That's a really big deal and it's a big chunk of money. And what that does is it authorizes, in the near term, three projects, and then it tees up an additional nine projects pending uh, feasibility uh, analysis. Um, so that's good news. That's, that's tangible progress. The hope is that when the Senate takes up that bill, that it will end up in the final product and get signed by the president. So stay tuned for that. That's something to watch, um, where it could be a substantial amount of resources coming to our state. We're working on a, a handful of other things as well. One of the key problems we see facing our waterways um, happens every time we have a big storm, and that's the level of toxic runoff from stormwater that ends up putting oil and heavy metals off of our streets and highways and into our waterways, including the Puget Sound. And the, this pollution creates a toxic mixture that unfortunately lingers. And we're working on a couple of, uh, of efforts in this regard. Um, one is a bill called the Green Stormwater Infrastructure Investment Act. Um, that's a big mouthful, um, but uh, the note, and I'm always uh, reluctant to talk too much about infrastructure because um, I believe uh, that's when um, eyelids start to droop and uh, people start to yawn. I believe infrastructure um, stems from a Latin word, structure, meaning structure, and infra meaning boring. <laughs> <laughs> but it actually really matters, so let me talk about this. So the Green Stormwater Infrastructure Investment Act um, would allow states like Washington and cities like Port Townsend and Port Angeles and Tacoma and tribes and others to tap into federal resources for green stormwater investment. Um, so, um, you know, Port Angeles just did a massive stormwater investment down on the waterfront. Uh, very expensive, though, and having the federal government be a partner in those efforts um, is, a, is a big opportunity. It would open up investments by the Environmental Protection Agency for those local water quality projects to support local governments and tribes who are trying to do the right thing. It would also, when the federal government funds highway projects, it would advantage those pr projects that have green stormwater investment as part of the project. So that, rather, so that we're solving the problem on the front end when we're doing highway construction. So that's, that's one piece of the picture. But we also want to make sure that all of us as citizens, and this group is a testament to this, have an opportunity to be part of the team also. You know, I, meet, I just met this morning with the Key Peninsula Business Association. I met with the 
local business leaders said, I would love to be part of the effort to clean up Puget Sound. We want to do some efforts like permeable pavement and things like that on our property, but it's really expensive. And so we've put forward a bill called the Green Stormwater Infrastructure Expenditures Tax Credit Act that says for every dollar you spend, you should get a 70, 70 cents back if you're doing the right thing and making investments in things like green roofs and rainwater storage and recycling systems and permeable pavement instead of paved roads and rain gardens and all those sorts of things to support both businesses and homeowners who want to be on the team, who want to actually be part of this pro uh, project. Um, you know, and frankly, that's again why I just express my gratitude to you. We need our neighbors and our coworkers and our neighbors' coworkers and our coworkers' neighbors. Um, you know, we need everybody uh, on, on the team. Um, I think I'm going to uh, wrap up there. There's a dozen other things I could talk about. I could talk about uh, bipartisan legislation that we put forward uh, focused on ocean acidification, which I think it really needs more attention. I could talk about our efforts to get British Columbia to clean up their raw sewage that they're dumping into the Straits of Juan de Fuca. It's a big deal that the, uh, that the Capital Regional District actually approved a plan up at Laughlin Point and that they actually have funding to actually build a wastewater treatment facility. I'm happy to go into more detail about that if anybody wants to. However, most of you just ate. <laughs> so I'm not going to do that. Um, but uh, let me just end by saying thank you again. You know, there's an African proverb that says, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. And when I look at the work that's being done by the folks in this room, I am very confident that we're going to go far. Thanks so much.